Today I've got a second order autonomous differential equation from our favorite problem suggester. So let's go over some of those terms. An autonomous differential equation is one where you only see the dependent variable. So notice there are only y's here. There's no independent variable except tucked inside of the y's and the y primes and the y double primes. And when I say second order, I mean the highest derivative is the second derivative. Furthermore, this is a nonlinear differential equation, and we see that for a bunch of different reasons. Notice we've got natural log of y, so the dependent variable is wrapped in a nonlinear function there. Furthermore, we're dividing by y prime here and dividing by y here, again, wrapping up y and y prime in a nonlinear function. Okay, so let's see how we might solve this. We have y double prime over y prime minus y prime over y equals natural log of y. So looking at those first two terms, we notice it looks like we've taken something like a logarithmic derivative of something to achieve those. And we'll kind of recall the following fact to get us off the ground so that we can easily rewrite these first two terms. And that fact is if we take the derivative of the natural log of a function, I'll just say ln of f of x, we get f prime of x over f of x. So the f prime of x comes from the chain rule, whereas the f of x in the denominator comes from taking the derivative of natural log. Okay, so that means we can take this left-hand side and rewrite it as the derivative with respect to x of y prime. So let's maybe write that right here. So I'll just put note that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y prime will be y double prime over y prime. So again, the y prime goes downstairs and then we take the derivative of y prime. Then furthermore, the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y will be y prime over y for the same sort of reason. So these two things right here, so I'll maybe put red dots next to each of them, will allow us to rewrite these things that I'm underlining in red over here. Okay, so let's rewrite this differential equation using this observation that we've just made. So this first term is the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y prime. The second term is the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y. And then over here on the right hand side, we have the natural log of y. We have not changed that. Now we'll use the fact that the derivative is a linear function to kind of factor it out of this difference. So that gives us the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y prime minus the natural log of y equals the natural log of y, like that. But now looking here at this inside, that motivates us to use a logarithm rule to take that difference of logarithms and turn it into a single logarithm with a quotient. So let's do that. Here we have the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y prime over y. Again, using logarithm rules. And that's equal to the natural log of y. But now we'll use essentially the same thing that we have over here, but just embedded inside of this logarithm. So let's see what that gives us. So that'll give us the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y equals the natural log of y. Great. So just to reiterate, I took this thing right here, which I'll underline in purple, and I replaced it with this derivative with respect to x of the natural log of y. So this natural log just comes down here, and then this derivative just comes down here. Okay, nice. But what does that motivate us to do? Well, notice the only way we see the y term, the dependent variable now, is inside of a natural log. So that gives us some motivation to make a change of variables. So let's do that. 
So that motivates the change of variables t equals the natural log of y. So now let's rewrite that using the substitution. So now we have the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the derivative with respect to x of natural log of y, which I'm replacing with t, but I'll just call that t prime equals natural log of y, but that is just t. Okay, but now we'll take a logarithmic derivative of this left-hand side, just kind of like we did over here, just replacing y for t, and that'll leave us something like this. We'll have t double prime over t prime equals t. Okay, so we've reduced this highly nonlinear differential equation to a slightly less nonlinear differential equation. I don't know if you can really measure the nonlinearness of a differential equation, but at least we don't have any logarithms. Okay, so let's bring that one up and then we'll continue on. Along our path to solve this differential equation, we made a substitution and did a bunch of calculations. Our substitution was t equals natural log of y, and that led us to the differential equation t double prime over t prime equals t. And now we're going to change the variable with which we take the derivative with respect to from x, which was at the bottom, although we never wrote an x down, except for the derivative with respect to x, to a derivative with respect to t. And so we'll do that with the following trick. So let's set u of t equal to t prime. So here's how you want to think about this. So u depends on t, which depends on y, which depends on x. So that's our tree of dependence. So we don't know exactly what this function is. That's in fact what we're trying to get at. We're trying to solve y in terms of x. That's the whole goal of a differential equation. We understand this dependence right here. This dependence is given by t equals natural log of y. And then this dependence right here, u in terms of t, well, we know a little bit about that, but not a ton. We know it's related by this substitution. Okay, so that's what's going on right now. Okay, so now let's take the derivative of this with respect to x. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to x, we'll get the derivative of u with respect to t times the derivative of t with respect to x equals the second derivative of t with respect to x. So I've changed my notation just to make it work a little bit better with the chain rule, but now I'll change it back. So I'll write this derivative with respect to t with dot notation. So I'll call this u dot then we have times t prime equals t double prime. But that's actually really good news because we can solve for t double prime over t prime equals u dot. And then we've got something to maybe linearize this differential equation. So like I said, we have u dot equals t double prime over t prime. And that's a pretty good place to be in. Okay, so plugging that into this differential equation will give us u dot equals t, but since that's a derivative with respect to t, integrating both sides with respect to t will give us u equals one half t squared plus a constant. And I won't go through all of the details, but we can assume that constant is positive. So we get one half a squared. I guess I should say non-negative and I'll just put an a half there to simplify some of the notation a little bit later. Okay, so now let's pull that back into our definition for u. So that means that t prime is equal to, let's see, one half t squared plus one half a squared, like that. But that tells us that two dt dx equals t squared plus a squared, kind of just rewriting this. Now we've got something like a separation of variables, which is pretty nice. So we can rewrite this as, let's see, 2 dt over t squared plus a squared equals dx. So that's a little bit sloppy, but that's the standard way to write separation of variables. Now we can take the antiderivative of both sides so the antiderivative of the left-hand side has something to do with the inverse tangent. 
So that's a standard integral that you'd find in like an integral table or that you'd learn in calculus two. That's in fact two over a times the arctan of t over a. And then the antiderivative of the right hand side will just give us x plus some constant, I'll call that constant b over a. So we've got x plus b over a, like that. Okay, so now we're actually pretty much home free because we can easily solve that for t and then use the fact that t is equal to natural log of y to solve for y. Okay, so let's finish it off. So we're pretty much home free. We left ourselves with this equation. And now we'll solve this for t starting by multiplying by a over two. So that'll give us the arctan of t over a equals, let's see, ax plus b over two. Now we can take the tangent of both sides. So the tangent and the inverse tangent will cancel and then we'll have the tangent of that stuff. So that'll give us t over a equals the tangent of ax plus b over two. So something like that. But now multiplying both sides by a, we'll clear this denominator and we'll have t is equal to a times that tangent. Then finally, since t is natural log of y, y is e to the t, which gives us our final solution. So y is equal to e to the a times the tangent of ax plus b over two. And that's our final solution. And that's a good place to stop.